Hello. Okay. I went live earlier. I don't know what was going on in the background. There's a lot of noise. So um, I'm, I'm coming back now. I really just wanted to hop on live quickly uh, to expand upon my most recent posts. So happy if you're here. Happy if you're catching the replay. Um, I'll try to make this short because I have a lot to say on it. Um, so what I was saying in the first in live number one essentially is that right now there's a lot of talk about trauma a lot of talk about trauma online and trauma defined as things that happen to us things that we experience the way people treated us created trauma okay but no one really expands upon what trauma actually is they just focus on this thing created trauma, this thing created trauma, this person created trauma for you. But what is trauma actually? It is unprocessed emotions. Unprocessed emotions that we carry with us that leave us dysregulated and constantly in dis-ease as we're trying to move through life. That's essentially what trauma is. Something happened, somebody did something to us, all these emotions came up that we didn't process, that we didn't have the tools to process, that we didn't have the support to process, and it has created this uh, dis-ease within us, this energetic block within us. And I like to use the example of breaking a bone. I don't know if you've ever broken a bone. I broke a bone when I was a kid. And it's like you break a bone and then instead of going to the hospital, getting a cast put on it, letting it so it can set properly, you break a bone and you take some Tylenol and the pain goes away and you move on with your day and you ignore the bone that's not broken and then the Tylenol or the painkiller eventually wears off and you have to take another one okay and you're moving on with your day you've got this broken bone that's healing because our body is always healing but you just keep taking a painkiller to relieve yourself of that pain and never actually deal with it and what happens is that bone sets in a very malformed way and if you want to set it properly in the future, you actually have to break it again, which is more painful, and then have it be set properly. Okay, so the reason I like this analogy when it comes to talking about trauma, for example, or talking about the way that we, the way that we address trauma, I should say, um, or the way that we don't address it, I should say, right? Because we, we're always looking for ways to feel better. We're always looking for ways to find relief from our discomfort. And that's not what our emotional resilience practice is about. Our emotional re resilience practice is about facing that discomfort, addressing that discomfort, working with that emotion, integrating it, getting the knowledge that it's giving us, the information that it's giving us to change our actions, to live in a more aligned way, to adapt to life in a better way, uh, moving forward, and actually overcome the thing that happened to us, actually heal not just feel better heal but actually overcome like that bone has been set in a way that it gets stronger as we grow right versus what a lot of us experience is that we never get that bone set properly we never address with those emotions uh properly address those emotions and we develop all these maladaptive ways of interacting with life that cause us to feel very, very uncomfortable, that cause all these challenging emotions to come up that need to be processed. And we become overwhelmed as they continue to flood up, flood up, flood up, arise within us, and we become overwhelmed and unable to meet them, unable to deal with them. So really, if we don't address that discomfort, if our goal is just to find relief from that discomfort, we're not going to really gain the wisdom that our emotions are bringing us. And so a lot of times I see online people talking about, you know, wellness tips and ways to feel better and take care of yourself. And all these tips are incredibly powerful and useful tools when they are not the finished product, but actually just a part, a step in the process. So things like meditation, things like journaling, things like yoga, things like fitness, these are all amazing things that allow us to feel better. We're moving our emotional energy, we're processing our stories, we're getting through some things. But in isolation, those things themselves be can become crutches and it's not a sustainable way to live. And because we don't really address the root, we don't ever really get to the root, 
Our emotions continue to bubble up, continue to bubble up. We continue to use these practices like taking a painkiller, but we never actually get to have the wisdom inform the way that we live moving forward, inform the way that we see ourselves, inform the way that we see the world. So while I support meditation, while I support yoga, while I support journaling as a way to notice and honor our emotions and to help integrate some of that information, are you doing those things to feel better? Are you doing those things to get relief from your discomfort? Or is it a part of your emotional resilience practice? Not the end result, but just step one or two in the process of fully integrating your emotions and releasing them as they come up periodically. Because in my experience, that is how we overcome trauma. That is how we overcome the things that have happened to us. By actually processing everything that we felt about it, by processing our stories, by looking at at the interpretations that we've developed, at the stories that we've developed about what those events mean about us or about other people or about the world at large. It's really important to audit that and to process that, right? So yes, while we can do things, we can go on a retreat. We can go on a beautiful weekend retreat and we can come out of that retreat and initially we feel amazing because we were separated from our world, from reality. Emotional resilience is about learning to exist in this world comfortably, which isn't going to be a linear process. It's not going to be 100% of the time. That's not the goal. But it's about becoming better and better about meeting those emotions as they arise and not being so dysregulated within our lives because of everything that we're carrying from the past, right? Going away, hiding away, taking that time to yourself is beautiful, it's special, it's important. However, it doesn't actually address what needs to be addressed. It doesn't actually look at what needs to be looked at which is how are you existing in this world? How are you experiencing life? Emotional resilience practice changes the way that we experience life fundamentally at our core, in our subconscious, okay? It's not just about alleviating the surface level of how we feel, okay? Because the feeling is just a cue And that is bringing us information. If we don't do anything with that information, if we don't turn that information into action, then it keeps cycling back around, right? And eventually we break down. Eventually we get to a point where the only way to heal is to break that bone again so that we can set it properly. And that's even more excruciatingly painful. That's even more work that's, that goes into that. It requires more energy, more effort, more support. And sometimes that can't be avoided because of our circumstances. But if you are introduced to wellness, if you are on a healing journey, if you are trying to overcome the things that have happened to you, then I want you to understand that there's a difference between doing something and feeling better and thinking that the work is done, right? And actually integrating your emotional information, actually becoming coexisting and being in harmony with your emotions as they arise over and over and over again and you become better and better and better about greeting them and better and better and better about working with them and who you are shifts because you're now operating as the most empowered version of yourself or in alignment with that right versus just wanting to do something to feel better just wanting to alleviate the discomfort or find relief from the discomfort and you know, getting into a cycle of having a practice that makes you feel better and being really consistent with it. And then life happens and you're not as consistent and it throws you off and then you don't have that crutch anymore. And you think, oh, this is because I'm not doing this practice. And my proposal to you is not because of not doing that practice, but more so about not getting to the root at what's going on not looking at what you're trying to run from, not fully processing that and releasing it and moving forward in an aligned way, but rather just taking a painkiller, putting a bandit on it and letting it form in a way within you that makes it more and more challenging to move forward and to adapt to life circumstances. 
Our emotions are our greatest allies. I will say this all the time. Our emotions are us, the most empowered version of us, speaking to us and wanting us to get in alignment, <laughs> right, with the most empowered version of ourselves. Like our emotions are really just saying, hey, this isn't it. You're out of alignment here. And it's going to do that through discomfort. And of course, we want relief from that discomfort. However, seeking relief for that discomfort as an end goal doesn't help us grow. It doesn't help us evolve. It doesn't help us learn more about ourselves. It doesn't help us. It doesn't change the way that we see the world or interact with the world. It's just a pause. It's just a temporary kind of shift, right? That eventually we have to deal with and we have to face. Um, and it doesn't have to be excruciatingly painful if we know how to work with our emotions in the present moment. If we know the tools to combine, because it's a combination of tools, this practice. It's not just, oh, we meditate and we're done. Meditation can be a part of the practice. It can be a tool that we use within that practice. But it's about, do you have the right combination of tools to move through the process in a way that fundamentally changes you at your core, helps you evolve, helps you to better adapt to life circumstances? Do you know what those tools are? What is in your toolkit? Have you created a sense of internal safety where you don't need to run and escape from the world because you learn how to be more aligned within the world? And when you do that, then things can start to change. Then you can make an impact. Then you can you can shift in all these other areas in your life, but not before that acceptance, not before that alignment, not before that peace comes in. And so I don't want you to con confuse the temporary relief as peace. That's, that's really what I wanted to say on this live, is that I don't want you to confuse the temporary relief from discomfort that you might get by going on a yoga retreat or doing some kind of psychedelic drug or, you know, whatever it is, that temporary relief that you'll get from that discomfort is not the same as the inner peace you get from building an emotional resilience practice. It is not the same. When you experience the difference, your mind will be blown. <laughs> right because it doesn't it doesn't cycle back it doesn't require you to repeat the same things over and over because you've truly you're truly able to overcome and move forward and create a new right um the things that once triggered you no longer trigger you not that you will never be triggered but that those same things you deal with that you don't carry that with you forward the things that used to terrify you no longer terrify you. And it's only in hindsight that you realize, oh my gosh, I'm not, the, I'm not that way anymore. I'm not the same anymore. That doesn't have a hold over me anymore. Versus just temporary relief that can feel like peace, but it's not real inner peace. And so that is what I hope that you're learning through my content. That is what I hope that you can take away from everything that I share is that temporary relief from discomfort, taking a painkiller, putting a bandaid on it is not the same as letting that really set and heal in an aligned way so that you become stronger. That is what emotional resilience allows you to achieve. You don't have to rely on the crutches. You don't have to rely on, oh, if I don't meditate every day, then I'm dysregulated. If the only way you can be regulated is from meditating every morning, there's work to be done there. There's something to look at there. There are emotions that are speaking to you there. And you just need to learn how to do that. <laughs> and it's far, far easier than you think. So um, that's all I really wanted to say on this live. If you're interested in knowing more about me and the work that I do, um, DM me. I'm happy to set up an intro call. We can get to know each other. Um, you know, if you're curious about my offerings, send me a message. I'm actually going to be uh, changing some of my offerings and including 
some variety um, within them. Um, and I just hope that you don't walk away feeling ashamed of this. Um, that wasn't the, my intention. If shame comes up, then I welcome that. Uh, there's information for you there. Um, but just know that this was, I hope that this speaks to you in a way that offers a bit of clarity, that it changes the way that you kind of see that, right? Uh, that helps you understand that there, you can go further, you can go deeper, you can go beyond what you've been doing um, to actually achieve what you're seeking, which is peace which is peace. I actually recently did a workshop on how to feel good. And I think that workshop would be really good for you if you are somebody that really just, you're just seeking relief as your end goal. Um, I plan to make it a paid workshop, but for now, send me a message and I can send you the link for it. It's a private link. Um, and you can watch that workshop where I really break down the difference between artificially feeling good and truly feeling good. You know, the difference between that temporary relief feeling and truly having inner peace from practicing emotional resilience and working with your emotions. So if you're interested in the link for that, send me a message. Um, and I just I'm sending you all the love. Uh, thank you for accepting me in the work that I do. It is my passion in this life um, to talk about our emotions and how powerful and amazing they are and how much they can help us. So with that, I send you lots of love. Love you for listening. And I will see you in the next live. Bye-bye.